Well, good morning, everyone. And I can say everyone because there's many more than I thought would be able to get here today. So thank you for being with us on this first Sunday in Lent. Um, Just a little bit of notes about this service. Um, As we've been talking, um, we are going to try something new with sermon series, which means we are not reading our regularly um, appointed texts for the Sunday, but otherwise kind of gleaning through the book we are reading, um, Real Faith for Real Life, and discerning from those suggested texts our readings for today. And so um, the first readings and the psalm and the gospels are all related to the different themes that we will be um, preaching and uh, singing and praying about um, on Sundays and then coming back on Wednesdays um, for conversation and um, prayer and to talk through the book. Um, There are more of the books um, in the back. If you haven't gotten one yet, um, it's um, by Mike Foss, Real Prayers, or Real Life, um, Real Faith or Real Life, Living the Six Marks of Discipleship. We begin today um, talking about daily prayer. If you notice, the liturgy will be just a little different for the next six weeks. Our confession and forgiveness actually comes from the service of Compline, you know anything about um, the monastic tradition in our Lutheran um, tradition, deacon and deaconesses would gather for prayers throughout um, the day. And this is the order of um, confession forgiveness for the last um, um, hour of prayer for the day where the community both confesses their sins and then forgives each other and then leads into the sharing of the peace. So that's just a little different. We will be um, reading that in different ways throughout these six weeks. Um, Today we're beginning with I as a pastor confessing my sins and you absolving of my sins and then um, we'll switch. And then sometimes it will be men and women. Um, Sometimes it'll be the pulpit side and the lectern side. I've been thinking and I shared with the uh, Saturday service that for the um, service where we talk about nurturing relationships, I don't know if I'm bold enough to say that um, the the Democrats and the Republicans will each um, forgive and absolve each other's um, faults and sins. Um, It's a bold statement, but I think that's what we are talking about in this season of Lent, is discovering um, the true reconciliation that comes through these um, principal um, disciplines of prayer, daily Bible reading, weekly worship, Um, serving in the community and beyond, offering of our generosity and nurturing our relationships. Um, I hope it has that opportunity for us to know why we gather as we do and be a light to our community. Then also one more thing um, for our affirmation of faith. Um, We will be again using um, uh, confessing or um, um, professing our Salem's um, vision and mission statement. And so we have an opportunity to do that, to think about if this fits for us as a congregation. And um, I think that's all we need to know about the service. We um, are thankful that the radio broadcast this morning is given in loving memory of um, Ron Rasmussen's birthday, uh, March 12th from Karen Rasmussen. And also we continue to pray for the families of um, Steve Canny, Stephen Canny, whose funerals Services were here this past Wednesday, and for the Ness family, um, for um, the passing of Eleanor Ness and her services, which were last Friday. So we offer our prayers uh, for the Canny and Ness families in these coming weeks. I did um, get a text um, by about 6.30 this morning that Melinda was on her way, and um, she got as far as Miller and um, got closed in uh, high Uh, Drifts, And so we turned her around and thank Al Scalinger um, for assisting with us today. So let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship and then join me in our confession. I, as your pastor... Confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned by my own fault in thought, word, and deed. And I pray, all God, God Almighty, to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. 
Almighty and merciful God, grant you healing, pardon, and forgiveness for all your sins. Amen. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned by my own fault in thought, word, and deed. I pray, God Almighty, to have mercy on me. Forgive me all my sins and bring me to everlasting life. Almighty and merciful God, grant you healing, pardon, and forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace. Peace be with you. continue our worship with our morning canticle. so that following your Son, we may walk safely through the wilderness of this world toward the life you alone can give. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
The reading today is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and to have charge of you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be to God. And the psalm today is Psalm 65. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who answer prayer, to you all flesh shall come. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our transgressions. Happy are those who you choose to bring and bring near to live in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. Those who live at earth's forest bounds are awed by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Save us as you promised. We will trust your word. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was also a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And then the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him night and day? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Sisters and brothers, grace and peace to you from our God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we are about to embark on this new journey in the season of Lent. And I'm going to try something new, something I've never done before. And that's a sermon series. And already, even before starting this journey, I've heard, well, this is something new, something we've never done before. It's never going to work. And you should know that this criticism has not only come back to me through the grapevine or a text or email, it's this dialogue that's been going on in my own head. Do we dare approach something in a new way? We are going to begin a Sunday sermon series followed by conversations booked on, based on this book by Michael Foss entitled Real Faith for Real Living, Living for Real Life, living the six marks of discipleship. And these six acts of discipleship include daily prayer, weekly worship, daily Bible reading, serving in and beyond the congregation, nurturing relationships, and acts of generosity, giving a tithe and beyond. 
So we wonder, is this just another one of these passing fads, one of the newest books out on the market, something that we will try and it will run its course and fade away, kind of like how we may think about the new tagline and capital campaign started five years ago by the ELCA called Always Being Made New. Is it true? Are we always being made new? Is anything new going to happen to us? Or are we going to hang on to the same old ways, thoughts, and understandings, and allow ourselves to just dwell on that skepticism? It's hard not to be skeptical at whatever seems to be the latest, greatest new thing that comes along the way. John the Baptist proclaims Jesus as the Son of God, and Andrew and Peter begin to follow. And the next day, they find Philip, and he begins to follow. And then Philip finds Nathanael and tells him, we have found him whom the Moses and the prophets have wrote, Jesus of Nazareth. And Nathanael's initial response is far from enthusiastic. Peter can be both warm and cold as he follows Jesus. We know that we know that well in listening to his story. He can do or say something incredibly impulsive and positive without a forethought and later be such a total blockhead. And when the risen Christ meets Jesus or meets Peter, Jesus will ask, Peter three times, do you love me? And three times, Peter will emphatically say, yes, Lord, you know that I do. And then he is told he will be taken where he does not wish to go. Paul is adamantly opposed to this new movement of followers who call themselves people of the way, who follow this risen Christ And his teacher, Gamaliel, warns him, if this plan or undertaking is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow it. In that case, you may even be found fighting with God. Well, for a while, Paul continues to fight. Paul isn't the first or the last person found to be fighting with God when God decides to do something new. Many of us find ourselves in that place at one time or another. And that's why I believe we all need the church and we all need each other. And Lent is a good time to be together to wrestle with this thing called discipleship. It's really not that new. It's something we could consider reclaiming. We can start this journey knowing that real faith or real life is hard. And discipleship takes practice. Let me say something first about the title of this book, Real Faith for Real Life. Now, some of you know that Nancy and I went to babysit our grandkids, Odie and Vidi, this past week. And maybe you saw the video I posted on Facebook of us waking up and feeding them breakfast, and they were so cute. And I posted it, and so many folks said, oh, that's just beautiful, I like that, and it was wonderful, and of course, it was very real. What you didn't see, and I didn't capture on video, was the disastrous meal we had at Cracker Barrel the following evening. Nancy and I decided to do some shopping and go for cross-country skiing and put the kids in the daycare for a while, and we thought we could pick them up from daycare, feed them, like in the Cracker Barrel, and then tuck them into bed, and then their parents would be home shortly after. And never could we have been so wrong. (laughs) They were crying and out of sorts and wouldn't eat. And Odie, who was potty training, needed to go to the bathroom, and yet he's afraid of public toilets. And I find myself at one point in a handicapped stall in the men's bedroom 
with a one and a three-year-old screaming at the top of their lungs. And Nancy was trying to get the food that had been brought to the table into to-go boxes. And the waitresses and a few kind folks were voicing their compassion. Well, I was wondering what the guy outside of the handicapped bathroom was thinking I was doing with these two kids. I was afraid I was going to be arrested. And others were glaring at us and saying, what were you thinking? I told their parents about it. And that was exactly their response. We never take them out in public after daycare. That was real life in all its highs and lows. We tend to post our highs on Facebook and hide our lows. We celebrate our children's wins and hide or discourage them processing their lows. So what is real faith? Sometimes I think real faith gets mixed up with real certainty. There are those who will tell you they know exactly what real faith is, what is to believed, how it is to believed, who is a true believer. We are, can be so certain about everything. Do we still have room for God to increase in us faith? If we are already so certain about the faith that we claim to believe. See, Nathaniel was pretty certain nothing good, good can come out of Nazareth. And Peter was quite certain that the true Messiah could not be betrayed, suffer, die on a cross and rise again. And Paul was convinced these people of the way, these followers of Jesus needed to be knocked down. They all lived with certainty. But then Nathaniel, Peter, Paul, and the other disciples met again the risen Christ along a lake, shore of a lake, or in a garden, or on the roads, when he appears to them first as a stranger and then reminds them of the story, of the promise. Through word and meals, he opens their hearts goes through locked doors, changes their minds, and helps his disciples navigate the challenges they face. And they change. They find out what real life is really all about and what kind of faith it takes to navigate a real life. And they find the joy of living in a world God created with people God redeemed. And those people, those disciples, changed the world. God invites us into a life that is deeply meaningful, profoundly worthwhile. But the call of God to live into forever will not be pain-free any more than any other call we follow will be without personal sacrifice and difficulty. The call is our life path. More than a destination, it invites us, pulls us into the world. Another word for Christ's calling is discipleship. And it is Jesus' invitation to True joy, real faith for real life. You can find that on page eight of the introduction to the book we will be reading in these six weeks. So that's the invitation to join us on this journey. And today we begin, as seems appropriate, with the disciple discipline of daily prayer. And rather than have me talk about prayer, let's just begin with some practice. So I invite you now to take a few moments and pray.
If you are listening in on the radio or watching on live stream, I'd ask you to pray for us who are gathered today in the sanctuary for worship. For those of us in the sanctuary, let's pray for those listening in at home or live streaming the service today. For those who are keeping us safe, clearing our roads today, our first responders, those who are called to work on this Sunday or keeping us safe through military service, let us pray. If you are home alone or listening to the radio or with someone here today, I ask you to just take a moment and ask if there is anything that you can pray for, either silently or aloud. So as we think about the discipline of daily prayer, this is maybe what it feels like and sounds like, God present in many places. So I invite you to join me in prayer. Holy, gracious, and life-giving God, we gather in many places with many challenges and many gifts. And you'd ask that we would be united in this season of Lent to claim our place as your daughters and sons and be the disciples that you continue to send out to make this world that you created a better place. Help us as we practice the disciplines of discipleship and we become more and more inept apt to share this gift of discipleship so that we can be a place that offers forgiveness, healing, and wholeness. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So I'd like to close with a couple paragraphs from chapter 1, page 15 of Mike Foss's book on the mark of discipleship, Daily Prayer. He writes, daily prayer is the first mark of discipleship. This is the habit of our living in relationship with God in Jesus of Nazareth. Prayer is a habit because it comes naturally as we practice it. Through pra- though prayer is natural to the soul, we stutter and stumble in approaching the throne of God and in articulating our desires and needs, our hopes and our dreams. One of the most incredible truths of Christianity is that God desires a real relationship with us. This is the desire of God's heart. Christians believe that it is in the coming of Jesus as Savior that God the Creator came to us in person. We believe that our God created us in a burst of eternal love, the same love that calls us back to God. Daily prayer affirms the relationship between creator and humanity, bringing heaven to earth in the life of the disciples of Jesus. In prayer, we rediscover and claim God's love and promises for our lives. For we live eternity in the here and now. Amen.
our faith with our proposed Salem mission and vision. If you'd respond in the bold. We are God forgiven and mission driven. As God's people, we desire to be that Lake Mills place where belonging, healing, growing, serving, and believing are open to all, regardless of background, experience, or aptitude. Central to this is that we are a forgiving, mission-driven community, which means we all want to have an impact shaped by the love of Christ to serve all others. Belonging means that we all belong, we all have a place, we all fit. Healing means that we all have brokenness and are in need of wholeness. God's word, the bread of life, and so much more helps us to take these important steps forward. Growing means we are designed by God to change, to grow, to evolve. We are committed to that process for everyone who is open to it. Serving means that Jesus made it clear that being a servant was central to being a disciple. Therefore, we see that everyone who is a follower is a servant as well. Believing means that faith and not works is central to our life. Simple and yet profound trust in the promise of forgiveness and mercy and the presence of the Spirit guides us in all we do. You may be seated for our prayers. Seeking the grace, mercy, and love of Almighty God, we offer our prayers for the church, for people in need, and for all of creation. Holy and steadfast God, keep your word near us, planting it in our hearts and communities. Make it blossom into proclamation for all people to receive. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. As you give your spirit freely, so also give bread that sustains every living thing. Graciously feed hungry souls and hungry stomachs with your bountiful provision. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Stir up courage among our people to resist oppressive powers and to lead people into freedom as you did through Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth, whom we commemorate today. Shine the light of your justice through their work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hold those who grow weary in their struggle with addiction or temptation, especially those that we think of in our own hearts. By your strength, bear them up to live fully in your presence. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Teach us the stories of our faith by heart as you accompany our ancestors in your uncertainty. So guide us confidently into the future. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. When we struggle and are tested, redeem us by the endurance of Christ. Give us steadfast faith to, to strive for your glory until we witness its fullness. Hear us, yes. O God. Your mercy is great. Reveal your will to, as you receive our prayers and confirm, conform our ways to your ways through the saving work of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue with our offerings. Thank you.
Almighty God, grant that your holy word, which has been proclaimed this day, may enter into our hearts through your grace, that it may produce in us the fruit of the Spirit for witness and service in the world, and to the praise and honor of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be be thy thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God who fills the creation with abundance, Christ who spreads his arms in forgiveness, Holy Spirit who draws us ever near to us, bless you and bring you to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Remember the poor.